everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for January 21st, 2021, Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, as we've been experiencing, uh, you know, I, we'll see if it's fixed, that we have little interruptions uh, during the meditation. So if we have those, then uh, just relax because I'll be back in within 20 to 25 seconds. So we've been able to navigate it, so we'll just continue to do so until it's fixed. Only in relationship can you know yourself, not in abstraction and certainly not in isolation. Krishnamurti. The quality of our relationships is the best guide we have to knowing ourselves. The way we interact, react, and respond to others allows us to understand where we are at in our soul's path in evolution. The way we behave with others acts as a mirror for our own consciousness. It reveals details of the role we believe we are playing in this world and lets us clearly see our reflection in the mirror. The more aware we are of the mirror that each relationship has, the easier it becomes to change our response after the judgment, reflection, we perceive to be there and then take a more enlightened approach to the image Ultimately, the relationship mirror is there to create deep insights into ourselves so we can adjust to create a higher attitude towards life and manifest a better world for our future. What you see in your relationship mirror each day reveals everything you need to know about yourself. What you like in others is what you believe you are lacking inside yourself. What you don't like in others is what you are rejecting and denial of inside yourself. It truly is this simple. The more intimate you can become with everyone in your mirror, the more the universe will reveal to you where it is you are blocked on your journey and how spiritually evolved you actually are. Through other people, we can see every detail of ourselves. We can see which priorities we deem to be sacred, understand the level of attachment and aloofness we have in our love life, see the level of fear and denial that we are dealing with, and discover all the hidden issues we have buried. Deeper inside. Relationships help us to see the real source of our pain, loneliness, frustration, and of course, get a glimpse into the deep eternal love that thrives at the core of our being. It is only through diving into this divine multi-dimensional, multi-sensual mirror that the divine supreme consciousness inside our soul can be discovered. Once this pure consciousness is found and brought up through the murky waters into every relationship we have, it paves a path for permanent and total liberation from all forms of suffering that have engaged us in all our lives. Residing in the mind, <coughs> excuse me, residing in the mind is hell, prison. Resting in the heart and love is heaven, freedom. We are more free than any thought conceived of what defines freedom. Who we are is far more vast than anything the mind thinks we are, Angela Walker. 
real poverty in life does not come from a lack of financial abundance, energy, or creativity. Poverty stems from an avoidance and neglect of looking at who you are in this relationship mirror. Whenever you get into the habit of blaming anything outside ourselves for our happiness, you cannot really know why we are unhappy. And we are not using the relationship reflection to see into the truth of who we are being. We cannot develop our most enlightened character that we can imagine becoming on life stage. The richest person in this world is the one who is the most free. This level of freedom in life comes not from a freedom that can be taken away from, yet from simply embracing and accepting wholeheartedly what is seen in the relationship mirror. The wise person has a respect for the feedback found in the reflection and a state of gratitude for it. No matter how depressing the image may seem to be, there is an equanimity in the mind with where things are at because they can be the bigger picture of life's journey. This truly enriched, enlightened being has developed the habit of approaching others without judgment, fear, or manipulation. They simply honor each person as a teacher who is sent to guide the soul back to source in the most unique and unsuspecting way. One of the most interesting insights you can have in your life is around about how the world actually is and how it sometimes appeared to be. The world is this highly intelligent and perfectly organized field, field of conscious energy which can appear to be dark, messy, harsh, unjust, and abusive. It has both polarities at all times. And when this is realized, the mind is not so easily tempted to believe there is only one side. When this enlightening thought hits you, it can become crystal clear how the universe is always in a karmically divined order and is constantly in balance with itself. It is never off balance ever. It only seems to be lacking balance and order when we have a narrowed mind and one-sided perspective. The real question is not whether life exists after death. The real question is whether you are alive before death. Oh, so. When we remove the blinds, we can revel in the glory of this sweet, unsolvable mystery that is meant to keep us living freely on the edge of the unknown by welcoming this spectacular mystery of the relationship mirror every day, we can see all three sides of the coin and truly be free. We can know who we spiritually are and start dancing beneath the stars without a care in the world. We can stop to relax, bathe in the sun's warmth, sun sunshine, enjoy the fluttering of a butterfly passing by, and feel the cool breeze glide across our face as we interact with our community from a place of understanding, lightness, awareness, and compassion. In our most enlightened space, we are constantly choosing to feel, accept, love, and appreciate ourselves exactly the way we are. This self-loving energy is then reflected outwards onto everyone else in this world giving them the feeling of self-acceptance exactly as they are. When we are abiding in this deep state of acceptance, we can't find every, we can find every experience to be exquisitely enlightening. We greet each experience with an open state of outer curiosity and 
inner self-inquiry. We constantly balance upon the edge of what we know and don't know to be true. It is this inquisitive state of mind that pushes us to reach into the spiritual depths of the heart and discover the most magnificent home that is within our innermost being by simply abiding in a state of wonder. We can know how easy it is to evolve in consciousness and every day discover a joyous heart in our chest overflowing with gratitude and love. This is the only way we can truly transcend all the suffering created in the mind. During your day, whenever you can, stop to take a good look inside yourself. Notice if either you have a heart filled with peace or a mind caught in some whirlwind of thinking. It's either one or the other. Never do they both exist together. It's like water and oil. They, remained, they remain distinct and separate yet can appear to be mixed. When you're looking inside, if you don't like what you find, Remember that you are the highest authority of your life. You are the great divine master of your inner world. You have the power to make it into a heaven or a hell. And it's all depending on one little thing. How connected are you with your heart? And by forming a practice of creating a cozy, sweet nest, which you can feel is home sweet home within your heart, your journey through life will never feel cold, dark, lonely, or fearful instead of you. You will always have light and warmth whenever, wherever you are. And this is a miracle. The moment that you realize that there is no way to make a home then this whole existence is home. Then wherever you are, you're at home. For some miracles. Relationships are designed to not turn out the way we think they should because they are meant to make you grow in the most miraculous ways. The enlightened path of relationship is the path to total freedom because it throws us into the greatest spiritual journey of our life. Relationships are the advanced life mastery course of life. They are the most ultimate challenge we can take. And when we open up to explore a deep, intimate relationship with someone, we have to look at ourselves in the spiritual mirror. The deeper we go, the more we will learn. Even if the relationship fizzles out in a week, falls through the cracks in a few months, or ends in devastating divorce after years, we are always given the gift of freedom in the end. The feeling of total liberation hits us like a gentle feather or a brick, depending on if we looked into the mirror and discovered this divine spiritual truth of who we really are along the way. Perhaps the greatest tip that you may find in creating a healthy, loving relationship is first knowing exactly what will ruin it. It's important to know that the very moment you stop enjoying your relationship, you are starting to destroy it. You will also kill any relationship by imposing your ideas about how the other should and should not be. If you don't let the whole truth hide your feelings and don't be impeccable, with your word, <coughs> you'll squeeze the life out of it. If you hide, play emotionally small, think small thoughts, and don't ever take a risk to be real, they cannot respect you and will one day walk away. <coughs> if you can never apologize for anything, they will always be at a distance for you. The secret is doing the opposite of each of these things. We all observe some room 
to make mistakes in life, and yet, if you are spending years feeling stuck in your relationship, you're not taking the time to look into the reflection in the mirror that's right in front of you. The day on which we come to know the supreme consciousness within us, and the outside world will also appear to us like the expanse of the supreme consciousness. This whole will be a mirror to us when we become a mirror within. Oh, sure. The last insight that I can share with you today may be one of the greatest secrets to mastering relationships of them all. This is about knowing how to distinguish and interact with the two types of people in life. There are those who feed you and those who feed off of you. There are those who feed you and those who feed off of you. People will either try to inspire you and lift you up or devour your energy and put you down. Many people out there aren't yet conscious about how nor the impact they have upon you. They live too close to their mind and cannot see the reflection in the mirror. The responsibility, then, is yours. If you are falling prey to someone who pulls you down each day, notice how do you respond when this someone is pulling your energy down. Why do you respond the way you do? Once you're able to respond with respect for yourself and never let anyone pull you down into the emotional dumpster with them, you have mastered one of the greatest lessons in this life. In the end, we are each the ultimate authorities of what we manifest in our lives. We are each responsible for enjoying the people we bring into our homes and responsible for the way we allow them to treat us. We are responsible if others can enjoy us or feel forced to run away from us. We are the real authority. The greatest relationship is with ourselves. The other is there, so our soul is pushed deeper and we stop pointing the finger at the outer world for our lack of love or power. The connection with our own soul is where the gold is at. And this happens simply by turning our attention towards no other direction than the central heart of our being. The heart is the answer to all our problems in this life. We do not come to earth to micromanage our lives, achieve our goals, reach the top, or fix our broken self-esteem. Our mission here is much simpler and sweeter than this. We are here to abide in the heart, transcend the ego, find our real spiritual path, and send into each day with pure, deep, eternal love from our soul. We were born to discover that who we truly are is beyond the form and the formless. We are here to remember that we are timeless spiritual beings who do not die. We came here to embody the sweet sacred knowing and develop an everyday understanding that eternity is our natural state of being. This is why we are here and understanding this in relationship brings about the gateway to freedom. Take one step that will catapult your life into an extremely positive and enlightening direction. One step, then the next, then another, then another. And see what happens. 
So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted. And I'm sure we all are. And what is the first thing that we care to do? Relax our bodies. Let go of everything. Stress, tension, fear, anxiety, worry. All of it. Let it go. We manifest as we hang on to it. We will surely create it into a reality unless we let it go or surrender it. And only you know what it is that you're holding, what it is that you're dragging behind you, what it is that makes you feel heavy and dense and not free and light. Because you, you'll identify it and you'll let it go. Surrender. And as you do this, the body will respond and relax naturally. And it'll be happy about it. If we spent more time concentrating from the standpoint of letting go, if it took us all day long, several hundred times of reminding ourselves, we would be in a relaxed state of pure bliss more and more and more with not one care in this world. So as we relax the body, we move into the now. And you can, the evil mind will argue with you, but there is only the now. The past we've experienced, that's why we call it the past. The future hasn't even come, we haven't even created it. But neither or some of us will go into that past. Some of, a lot of us reminisce, and then we, we move on. We go into the now, hopefully. And others will stay there so darn long that they end up taking that past into a future that doesn't exist. And they create that future from that past, and then they relive that past in that future. This is why people will say, why do I keep making the same mistakes? Why do I always gravitate towards this or that? Why am I always in the same relationships? They're different, but they end up saying being the same. Why is that? Because they took the past, put it into a future, and are living it. Future isn't there, but then there are those who will wonder in the future, continually wondering what if and when. How? When am I going to meet this person? When am I going to have enough money? When is this going to happen? When's this going to go away? When's that going to go away? And the now, which is the most powerful that we can imagine, is a lot of times neglected. But when we move into the now, we still the mind and the ego and the subconscious mind. And what does that mean by stilling it? You step outside of it. You don't have that noise, that chatter that we all do. We all have thousands of thoughts, most of them not even ours. And we step outside the mind and the ego, and we view them. We view them. We watch how they operate. This is how we learn to master the mind and the ego. And all that noise is gone. And we're in a peaceful state. And we're not thinking about anything. Nothing. You're just being. Now, what happens if we have all these little thoughts and they kind of pull us off? and we wander off out of the now. Well, you're conscious. You'll say, I'm wandering off in these thoughts, most of them which aren't mine, so I'll concentrate on my breath. And your breath is divine positive energy. Why is it? Because it sustains the vessel that houses the kingdom of God. Not only that, it relaxes you, it focuses you, it strengthens you, it increases your stamina level. It calms. It does a lot of things. That's why it's so divine. And a lot of us take it for granted. So if and when you move out of the now by these thoughts, all you do is focus on your breath and you're in the now every single time. Now we relax the body, we're in the now, and we have our divine positive energy, our breath. So we watch right up the center of our bodies. 
seven energy vortexes, seven circles of light, all different colors, all different flower shape. So we take our divine positive energy and we mix it with our God force love light energy, our chi, our prana, our ki, and we softly move. We watch our heart mind's motion picture and we move this energy, these two energies intermingling all the way up to the top of our heads. And we start with the red wheel of light, the root chakra, the muladhara. This deals with our survival and it is blocked by our fear. Then we move to the orange wheel of light, the sacral chakra, the bodhisattva. This deals with our pleasure and it is blocked by our guilt. And then we move to the golden yellow wheel of light. The solar plexus chakra, the manapura. This deals with our willpower and it is blocked by our shame. And we move to the emerald green wheel of light, the heart chakra, the anahata. This deals with our love and it is blocked by our grief. And we move to the throat chakra, the Vishuddha, the blue wheel of light. This deals with our truth, and it is blocked by our lies. Then we move to the indigo wheel of light, which is our third eye chakra, the Ajna. This deals with our insight, and it is blocked by our illusion. Then we move to the violet wheel of light, the Sahasra. This deals with cosmic energy, our crown chakra. It is blocked by our ego attachment. Now we watch as we move these frequencies, these energies, all the way to the top of our heads, merge. And then what we do is we briefly hold them. We are love. We are light. We are. And in that short period of time, we condense and compress these liquid and these energies into liquid energy, which is omnipotently powerful. We release it over our pineal glands. And once we do this, the pineal gland expands into fullness. I see it as a green ball, a rosebud, with the liquid energy poured over it, it immediately expands into a fully blossomed rose with multicolored petals and a beautiful fragrance. And it exudes peace, tranquility, calmness, confidence through the heart-mind. It is the gateway to all the particles of existence. It's the gateway to everything, astral plane, spiritual plane, pure consciousness to God and beyond. And we watch it and we move this energy and we expand it. Just fully working operation. No deficits. We're also consciously aware that we are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude. And we know that these bodies that we're in, our heart mind, our ego mind, our subconscious mind, our higher self, our soul, our spirit, our God, pure consciousness, all one. We are heaven, literally heaven on this earth. And every step we take, we create paradise. And we're learning shine our light, our God force love light energy out to everyone, everywhere, flooding, saturating and bathing all of our brothers and sisters, all life, the highest supreme value in the universe. And this is pure, deep, eternal love and gratitude. So you can picture this in your heart, mind's motion picture. This planet will end up glowing. 
with billions of gods shining their light everywhere. Absolutely magnificent. And we all will be there to witness this. Because it will be all of us. We have others with us. Obviously, we have other facets and aspects of ourselves, reflections. We're all teaching and learning from each other. We have the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes. We have the ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Sananda, Jesus, El Moria, Abundantia, Pal, Thoth, Diablo, Yeshua, many, many, many more. And they're reflections of us, both of them. Different facets and aspects, as we are them, of them. And they're both consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude. Archangels are a civilization that vibrated at a different frequency than we do. We don't see them like we see each other, but we meet with them in this life. And it's not like we notice it in the beginning, but afterwards it kind of dawns on us. That wasn't just a typical meeting. That was an interaction with an angel. Most of the time they give us a message to remind us how absolutely spectacular it is to live in these bodies, to experience this life. Absolutely phenomenal. And, and, and a little bit of the bliss that's within us bubbles to the surface every single time. Now thousands of them can surround any one of us at any one time because of their vibrational frequency they can hold a larger number in a small area. the ascended masters they are those who have mastered ascension into physical form out of physical form hold pure consciousness God form we have ascended into physical form mastering physical form by creating our experiences in this physical form and perfecting our creations also learning and discovering who and what we are the light that we are so that when we do decide to leave these bodies, we will not follow the light because we will know that we are the light. And we're drawn to call upon in this meditation all of the other reflections and aspects of all of us. And there's a whole lot of them. We call upon all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, forming of the circle of light and the total liberation and the higher frequencies of deep eternal love and gratitude and peace of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya. And they come in the Google Plexus. Googleplex will fill this universe. They come in trillions of Googleplexes from every direction. They're with us now. We call upon all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, Agartha and beneath earth. Many, many, many civilizations. Only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and be with us in this now, in this meditation, in the forming of this circle of light. And they come in the billions, and they're with us now. Call upon all the galactics, off-worlders, celestials, not just from this quadrant of the Milky Way galaxy, but from the entire galaxy and all galaxies and all universes. And only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love 
and of and from the highest, the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude, can be with us in this now, in this meditation, in the form of the circle of light. And they come in uncountable numbers from every existence, consciously aware of a high vibrational frequency that they are. The others with low vibrational frequency cannot because their frequency cannot sustain itself in our frequency of higher, deep, eternal love and gratitude. It'll vanish or it'll disintegrate. So we're only familiar with a smidgen of them. A thousand plus travel through the solar system every day. Trillions travel through the universes every day. The ones that we're barely familiar with are the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, feline, the Zeta Reticuli, Nords, the Grey, the Draco, the Reptilian, the Golden Pyramid, the Avion, many, many, many more. All shapes, sizes, colors, configurations. It's absolutely amazing. All with a God spark inside each and every one of them. They've been assisting us in our evolution, enlightenment, ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and slavery. And they come in uncountable numbers and they're with us now call upon all of our loved ones, all of those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation forming the circle of light and the complete liberation of this planet Earth, Gaia Arya. And they come in the billions, and they're with us now. We call upon all the light energy beings that have decided to be housed in the following forms, on in, above and below this planet Earth, Gaia, in this now, in this meditation, of forming the circle of light. Only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest, the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love, and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, in the forming of this circle of light. We're only familiar with a smidgen of them. They come in trillions, shapes, colors, sizes, forms, configurations, which we've never seen before. And we're only slightly familiar with a handful. The fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarfs, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the sun, the tar, and the minotaur, many, many, many more. And in the trillions, they are with us now. We're all gathered, arm in arm, hand in hand. All of our gods won in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, prosperity, abundance, tranquility and benevolence. And we are all one and we are all God. And we are all love. And our God force love light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And it continues to intensify. And it continues to expand. We immediately form a massive circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia Arya, and this now, this meditation. Where is this light? This light is the core being and essence of each and every one of us. It is the God force love light energy. It is so brilliant, it grays out the darkness of sacred space. It would take a thousand billion suns in this solar system to even come close to its radiance. 
and we're flooding this planet, Earth, Gaia, Earth, eternally. All of our brothers and sisters, whether they're awake or asleep, head to toe, inside and out, with this deep, pure, eternal love and gratitude. See it and feel it through your heart, mind, motion picture. This is what's lifting the vibrational frequencies of all of us into higher and higher, higher existences of harmony, of deep, eternal love and gratitude. Who are you going to levitate above the planet? Immediately we're met with a massive glitter ocean. And we see all these trillions of beautiful lights reflecting each of us back and forth. Each of us teaching each other, learning from each other, educating one another. And we're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is the column of light that reminds us all that we are the power of healing. Then we're met with the, pur with the purple, violet, blue flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that reminds us all of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. Then we're met with the white fire. This is a column of light that reminds us all that from head to toe, inside and out, we are imbued with this white fire armor. God force love light energy and it protects us 24 7 there is not one thing anything externally any force energy frequency that can harm move disintegrate breach this white fire armor nothing can externally but only you only you, only you have the power that if you decide, whether consciously or unconsciously, to lower your vibrational frequency low enough through hatred and anger, envy, greed, anxiety, stress, and fear, you will create a breach in your white fire armor enough so to allow all the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Now, if you do decide to do this, then you're immediately met with the purple transmuting flame. This is a column of light that reminds us all that you can bring in the purple transmuting flame. You can transmute all of these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutralite substance, send them to pure consciousness where they are gone. Then you're met with the violet ray. This is a column of light that reminds us all that you can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame. And you can cleanse and clarify the area where these lower dark matter survival matter frequencies work. Sealing the breach in the white fire armor. Restoring your harmony of deep eternal love and gratitude. And higher vibrational frequency. We're then met with the golden, white, pink light. This is a column of light that reminds us all that we are the sun. We are the sunlight. We are the sun rises and the sun sets, the rain and the rainbows, the trees and the forests, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the soil, the clouds, the sky, the animals, the snow. We are everything. So the next time you're in awe of the beauty of a sunset or a sunrise or a rainbow or a snowfall, you're in awe of you. Each and every one of us are the beauty. We continue to levitate above the planet in this massive circle of light, flooding everything. And as we continue up, some of us step outside of our physical bodies, if we're holding them, and hover effortlessly above them. We come across this massive crystalline light tower we created, 
It's larger than the solar system. In the center of the tower is a massive oblong sphere. In the center of that sphere is a golden white shimmering light. And it is literally saturating all of us head to toe inside and out in this warm wave of mist. This is pure deep eternal love. Now surrounding it are other circles, beautiful colored lights, all sending out waves, mists, saturating, flooding, and bathing us all. Gratitude, harmony, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, well-being, wealth, abundance, gentleness, and kindness. These are all waves and reflections of all of us. At the top is the golden ocean. We designed it so the golden ocean can come cascading down eternally, flooding all of us, head to toe, inside and out. Deep, pure, eternal love. And all of us are drops of that golden ocean. And we hold the essence of that golden ocean. And, and the ocean is the drops, and the drops are the ocean. The only illusion is separation. We then see our meditative sphere. It's that center circle. We created this sphere almost three years ago. It houses over 1,200 of our meditations in perpetual motion, intensify increasing in strength. From all of us, hundreds of millions of us on and off world, all in everything and everything with the highest and the greatest intent of deep and pure eternal love and gratitude and the full liberation of this planet and the civilizations of this planet and to deep, pure eternal love and gratitude and higher existence of harmony. That's why this meditative sphere can be seen, heard, and felt and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And this is why it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. And it's our relationship with ourselves, with each other, that allows us to discover who truly we are, what we are, and how absolutely magnificent we are. And the real question is, is not whether life exists after death. The real question is whether you are alive before death. I'll join you in the meditation and return to close this out.
Thank you. 